What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. Today I'm gonna to be touching on a topic which, you know, I brought up in the past in a video and I think that right now, if you're not hopping on it, you really need to because these cars are appreciating like all sports cars, but specifically, the 1314 is still the greatest of all time. Do not at me. I know, I know, but let's get into some of the reasons why you should go pick up your very own, if you don't have it already, your very own 1314 Mustang 5.0. All right, so here we are with my 2013 Mustang 5.0. Now the 13 and the 14 are basically the exact same. Uh, they really didn't change much, but it is the facelift of the S197. And it's the final years of the S197 platform, which by the way, is the last GT500 that Carroll Shelby himself had his hands on and is the last current GT500 with a manual transmission featuring the TR6060, which we all should have gotten, but we got MT82s and that's a different story. This car right here has actually been appreciating and adding value as I just have it sitting or driving. It's literally making me money by sitting here. And that is pretty much across the board for all performance cars. But I think if you ever wanted to be a collector, you wanted to get a 1314 Mustang GT500. And here's why, it came standard with LED front headlights and LED rear taillights with the rings that almost everybody unanimously can decide are the best headlights and taillights out of all the Mustangs. Next, there are so many parts, aftermarket parts for these cars because they've been around for so long and the engine and transmission's the same from 11 all the way up to 14 that there are so many aftermarket kits, parts, uh, just modifications that you can do to really make these your own. And this is why I think everyone needs to have one of these because it's basically like everyone needs to go through a Jeep phase. I feel like even though I'm not a Jeep guy, there's a thing about like upgrading and modifying a vehicle that has a following that you get to be a part of a community. And I think the Mustang community is one of the best. And I think the Jeep currently is one of the best for off-roaders until the Ford Bronco comes out, which hint, hint, we have something on the way regarding the Bronco, blah, 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 which I'll get into in the future. Now keep in mind, this car was gloss black. It's wrapped all crazy. I know it's not everyone's flavor, but that's the point. The Mustang is supposed to be whatever you wanna make it. And this stuff's all changeable. Like I could repaint the calipers to blue. I could change out my wheels to welds and do a drag pack. I can always change the airlift suspension back to a static suspension if I wanted to. I could wrap the car orange. I could wrap the car purple. I could wrap the car whatever the heck color I want. The thing is, is that there are so many parts like, oh, you like a carbon fiber wing? There's about four to choose from and you can go track spec super high, tiny little spoiler, GT500 OEM look, or even like a duck bill, a wicker bill, things like that. Oh, you don't like the, the rear wart that's usually right here? You can add the pony, you can add a light up badge, you can add the black GT, a chrome GT, custom paint the GT, you can have this custom painted to match your car. There's RTR, there's Fred's parts, which is now CJ Pony parts. There's so many different things that you can do with these cars, it is ridiculous. So like in the rear, there's, you know, those configurators that are like, oh, there's over 15,000 possibilities by, you know, doing the math and changing this to this, you know, how they have those combinations. I would say there's literally millions of possibilities of Mustangs based off of the parts. And I'm talking just 13 and 14. I mean, the wheels, everything. I'm not talking about like stupid stuff like tires and you know, whatever like that. But I'm talking about legit aftermarket parts, side skirts, mirror caps, hood vents. I'm just going around the car and looking at it, but you can have front lips that are totally different, bumpers that are different. And in the front end, like there's so many different grills. There's so many different styles of grills. I have the GT500 style. They also have, you know, California Special. They have Billet if that's your thing, if you're like an old man that loves a lot of chrome. There's tons of chrome parts um, available, which I wouldn't recommend, but whatever. There's about like 20 different hoods available. If you like the stock hood, you can even do carbon fiber uh, hood vents, which works too. Um, you could do so many different things. Now, usually an option is that you can do a glass roof, which was a package by Ford OEM. It's very rare. Um, my buddy Oscar with the GT500, his is a factory glass roof. So someone like spec that car, but people do aftermarket sunroofs. Um, they also get aftermarket glass roofs like off of a crash car and they'll, they'll weld them in type thing. Um, they're just really crazy. Now, when you come to the inside, you can do so many different things as well different steering wheel, color combinations, you do aftermarket, OEM, Boss 302, you can do different seats, you can do Corbos, Recaros if you want OEM, they come in leather, blah, blah, blah. 
There are so many different options for these cars. And this is why I think you should have one because if you don't experience it, you don't even know what it, you're missing because all these people, they go through life, they drive what's a boring, boring car. They just have a Elantra or a Civic or whatever that's their commuter. I know Civics have their own aftermarket stuff, but it's their commuter car and they never get to experience what you feel whenever you drive a car that is truly yours. There's two frame of minds. There's one, keep it completely stock and as a collector, you're gonna add value to the car, which I agree with, that's 100% true. I think that a stock untouched or a very lightly touched car is gonna hold its the most value. Like I'm talking lowering springs and tent and exhaust. Like that's your build. It's gonna be a very comfortable, moderate riding. It's gonna be very kind of basic stock OEM performance with a little bit of noise. You know, it's not gonna be anything to be the best out, but you know, it's gonna be its own. But if that's not your style and you wanna go crazy like me and I've literally touched every single piece on this car, even the ones you can't see, then this is what you get. And I think totaling maybe all in I think maybe I'm in it like 45. I think you could buy all of this stuff and rebuild the car at 45 grand, 45 to 50. I wanna give it a buffer because there are some things that are definitely harder to find and so you have like resource going up. So I don't know, I just think that if you have never experienced a car that you truly are excited about and hop into, you're missing out because that is what ultimately uh, American um, Americana car culture, like hot rodding, that's what it is. It's like trying to be better, the improvement of a car that's completely stock. I mean, that's really what this is. And I think this is a great model to start with. If you've never built a car, build it with a Mustang. The community is super helpful on Facebook, super helpful on the forums. There's tons of YouTube content. I think if you're gonna build a car, start with a Mustang. It doesn't even have to be the 1314. I'm just very, very biased and I think that's the best one. But I think that if you got one like 11 to 12, you'd still be in very well, like you'd be great. You could always change the bumper and headlights and taillights like everyone else does. But right now, I think this is the time to get one, especially because the prices, I mean, they're just going up and up and up. So I'm running out of light, but I didn't even open up the trunk, but we do have subwoofers in here, which I don't know if you guys remember that install, but this alone changed the entire dynamic of the car. I have an upgraded sound system because the base model sucked but everything in here like poops on the premium. The only thing I'm missing is footwell lighting, which if I wanted to upgrade, they have aftermarket footwell lighting that's even crazier than the OEM to where it actually like changes to the music and way more color options and things like that. But the OEM is nice because it comes with like the, you know, the door grabs and the cup holder. But if you want under footwell lighting, there's so many options, Amazon, whatever. You can literally make this car 100% your own, 100% unique. I wanted to bust this video out because I know it's getting dark, darker by the second it feels like. Um, I am currently in a battle with California with this car because I got state refereed with zero being ever like pulled over, zero interaction with a cop, nothing. And this car was flagged for a referee. So I went to go get smogged. It was not gonna pass uh, because they plugged me in and immediately they said they can't touch the car. And so that's the first time I've ever seen that um, with a smog and I've smogged plenty of cars over the years. So this one, whenever he plugged it in, he showed me on the computer, he typed yes, um, you know, accepted yes, had my VIN, had my plate, verified everything, scanned my registration and locked out. So he was like, that must be a state, flag, a state referee flag. So that's what I'm dealing with. I have to call on Monday because it's now the weekend and it's holiday week this week. So it's probably gonna be short. So I have to schedule a referee to look at my emissions equipment and I did nothing wrong and never got caught by cops or anything like that. So this is the big issue with this car right now is that I am dealing with the smog crap even though the car is 50 state legal, I have a Whipple 50 state carb legal kit with the carb EO number sticker. Everything's legit. My OEM cats are on the car. Every monitor is set, O2 sensor is set and here we are. We're dealing with California and it's a big money grab. I just hate to say it but it's a big money grab and I'm tired of talking about it, but it is a hot topic and everyone's dealing with it. And it's never enough is, is what I'm getting at. It's never enough for California because here's the thing, leaded gas used to be terrible for you. Then you got unleaded gas. And now unleaded gas is terrible for you. We're going to electric. Well then I guess in 30 years, we'll figure out that electric isn't that good for us and we'll go to nuclear cars. That's my, that's my like, vision moving forward is they're gonna find electric cars aren't that great, it's gonna be something else. And it's all a big money grab because really, if we're talking about it, I shouldn't be plugging in, they shouldn't do a visual, they shouldn't do anything 
other than a sniff test because that's why CARB and air quality, I mean, California Air Resource Board, that's CARB. That's the reason why it exists is the air quality here in the valley. If it's anything but a sniff test, they don't give a shit about the air quality. They only care about what money they can get from the aftermarket accessory people that pay into it and get tested and want to pay for all the fees and stuff like that so that way they can have a sticker. That's really the truth. I'm getting really frustrated by it because I just want to enjoy this car. It did everything I had to to make it right and it's still making a huge headache. And I know it's all about freaking money and that's how it always is here in California. But I'm not going to move. I know it's just I'm complaining about it but something needs to change. People gotta talk about it because if people don't understand it and connect all the way through the dots, then they may not miss, then they may miss out on the information and they may not ever actually make that connection. So I just wanted to help you guys out there in case you don't know, freaking California loves to take your money. I'm sure everybody knew that. So that's kind of the status update and I really think that you guys need to, I mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir. A lot of my audiences already have a Mustang, but leave a comment down below do you guys agree like the mustang community is really what ignited a lot for people like for me this is the car that got me into cars like this is the car that i wanted to build since i was in middle school like this is it but i know you know you move on and go to the different chassis i feel like i need to share that with everyone because they are somewhat a great value for 20 grand ish you can get into them and there's so much you can do for five to ten grand into them and i just think that yeah, like I said, everyone needs to experience this thing. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up right here. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.